Welcome to Ice Crash Marauders leveling guide. It's time for mapping and gear. We're still using the maze we picked up uh, the late crew. The DPS is seasoned. We can do uh, Dried Lake or uh, Tropicals easily. Picked up a lot of heat. And I still have the five link cargo, still not using it. It needs coloring, and that can be rather expensive. Rolling with 25 chromatics at the same time, and even if you do get it, chances are your resist will be messed up since you'll be replacing an astral plate. There's the three red, the green for hypothermia, the blue for increased area of effect, and the sixth socket can be used for hatred. Nice to have a blue socket on the side so you can easily swap concentrated effect and area of effect but uh, it'll do there you see the gem set up still not have temporal chains on hit and I'm still using the quicksilver with uh, warding anti quirsh So at this point I want to be replacing the, the weapon and I need uh, temporal chains on hit and I need to improve my uh, reduced stun threshold. Right now checking mana cost, mana pool. Can I handle it or not? So iron reflexes and unwavering stones taken. Lost a lot of armor and the 200 energy shield of the carcass will do absolutely nothing since uh, I'm running um, uh, blood rage besides you uses blood magic. So for partying, party members, the party members can uh, run uh, hypothermia as well since you'll be chilling so much but it can get quite laggy for your computer. This time teaming up with a uh, poison arrow, he uses uh, ice shot to uh, chill the targets. And, uh, this is doable, but when you get uh, a map with burning ground, things get really laggy. So the cruel mace <coughs> needs a lot of hits at this point in a duo map running foul haste oh that's nice for teamwork torn flesh not really a problem since my dps isn't that high and right now we're switching to a sad gloves and like I said before, we should have done that a long time ago. Most likely you have one blue socket in the gloves. So you could run a Chaos Golem, but it has a really heavy intelligence requirement. So if you put your Flame Golem in there, you could use a Minion Life. And the green socket, I think I put in faster attacks, but uh, probably better to put in greater multiple projectiles. And instead of life leads, you could use life gain on hit. So switching gears, always new puzzle. Will your resistances be okay? I switched the gem belt. I'm now using a stun belt for some more reduced uh, stun threshold and stun duration. Since I do not have the threshold on the weapon, uh, it can be hard to scale reduced stun threshold. In the guide, I made a informational tab about it, read it if you can. Tricky part about how much duration you need 
is all about the philosophy to attack first, stun first, and then kill first. So how much time you like to have the monsters to be stunned is really up to your weapon speeds because before they wake up you should be able to hit them again. And if you really got a lot of stun duration, the nice way of doing it is uh, stunning them, then using Enduring Cry, Rallying Cry, and then being able to Ice Crash hit the targets before they wake up. So that's uh, the sweet spot there. Still trying to file the gloves in the meanwhile, no luck, I didn't get any. And uh, I think I filed about 20 to 30 gloves, all four linked and colored. But I failed there. Odds are, if you file 20 to 30 gloves, you get something nice out of it, perhaps an elemental weakness on hit you can sell, but the odds are around there. 20-30 file needed. And that's RIP. Good day to you, Exile. So I'm still looking around for uh, a series promise. On hardcore it might be difficult, but take some time. Here you see what happens if you do not stun the targets and uh, you do not press your granites. It's still rather dangerous and tricky. And if you stun him, it's no problem at all. So we switched the mace. We now have a, a slower one, but does a lot more damage. The old weapon has been saved to use as a heavy strike boss killer. We picked up Batsiri Flask, so now we can uh, do some more damage. Uh, besides bursting damage, we also get some Leech. Ice Crash has only 20% physical damage, so we need a lot of life leads to compensate for that. And let's see how it goes. No faster attack in the leap slam configuration, it goes rather, rather slow, and that's really just going to hurt your clear speed. The sun duration is very long, so that's a good thing. And swapping to heavy strike. That comes with the price though, you're not be leveling up the gems you want in your offense. Here you see some crafting of a 5 link to get the faster attacks back in. You can alteration orb, physical percentage and then regal it, that's the best way to go about it. You can also regal a physical, added physical roll, but if you then have to craft percentage physical damage and that's a lot less damage than if you craft flat on it with the uh, Fagan recipe. Here you can see the recipe to get a flat fist, the highest roll is unavailable, so you cannot achieve that. So using the alteration orb and regal on the percentage physical damage we got a nice new mace. We also picked up a, Ma a Marovi unique. So we're gonna leap slam with the Marovi and the other five link will be used as the boss killer with heavy strike. And we'll see if uh, we can run this low attack speed. As you can see, it hurts clear speed with really slow, and the ice on the ground is not helping because we're running at Siri Flask, so we had to switch out the Sapphire of Warding, uh, the, I mean the Quicksilver of Warding, so we had to use Warding on the Sapphire Flask, 
meaning no more chill immune. But are we just quite some damage? The hero of Bass triggers very nice. However, this is not ideal. As you can see, damage is huge, but the speed is uh, rather slow. So Marori, Marori is not an option for Ice Crash, I'm afraid. But at least for this build, we have to uh, hit him first, stun him first, and kill him first. And hitting him first with that is a problem. So we're gonna increase the speed a bit. Use the faster mall. Still a slow mall, but faster than the Marori for the Ice Crash. And use the Marori as a boss killer. And for heavy strike, Marowi will be an excellent weapon of choice. Going with a slower weapon can also uh, be a solution for your mana issues. Uh, since we're missing the, the six sockets on the Ice Crash Mall, we have to swap out some, uh, I think it was Leech on the Vengeance. Right, so all good to go. Let's see how this speed goes. So instead of minus 10 attack speed on the leap slam, we now got plus 10. Do note that the base speed of the weapon doesn't influence anything on leap slam speeds. It's only the attack speed modifiers that influ influence leap slam. Ice crash, however is based on the base attack speed of the weapon. So this is doable. This is doable. This speed you can run. Still not ideal. You will be wanting a weapon with around 20 attack speeds or a faster weapon with 10. So another makeover of the tree. I lost some in notes. We picked up one extra stun duration node, and we picked up some uh, light leech to compensate for the low physical damage of Ice Crash, besides giving the maximum amount of leech when I use the Atsiri Flask. So here I'm running a level, level 70 by Dry Peninsula and as you can see it's going great when you, if you reach this with your character you can be proud of yourself level 75 as you notice I usually press my granite here when I see a Roa but this is a blast playing the reason I made this guy share this build with you Playing like this, it is great fun. Awesome. Uh, keep slamming in. One hit to kill most of the monsters. Just missed a, missed a little bit of DPS to really one shot them, but that can be arranged. Gems still need levels, gems still need quality. Falling gems will be a problem because I'm not leveling gems with the off weapons which means we still have the Marowi boss killer there so I'm swapping to the Marowi and things are great do know that with lockstep and the changes to weapon swap weapon swapping has become much better life you did get some uh, lag and uh, you didn't know whether or not you swapped your weapons. 
This is the recipe I use, the 75 one. And I use it to break two regals at the time, same time. The rest I use to get alteration orbs. Preferably use gear I potentially can use for myself. But this is uh, the way I finish up my gear here. This recipe I can make very nice weapons. And the regal orbs are worth a lot. About 50% more. Because of the jewel recipe, people need a lot of regals for that. Or jewel recipe, the jewel or crafting. I'd rather use astral plates for this one, because the evasion plates have to compete with uh, the unique queen of the forest. But this will do. So if I'm low on rings and amulets, I also alchemy orb those. So I pick up white ones uh, in every 75 plus map. So here are the jewels. Even just blue jewels can be uh, sold. These are the gloves for the science. I've used a lot of them and still not got a temporal change on it to improve the Sainet gloves. But I keep on doing it and in the end I'll get it. Probably the cheapest way will be just buying one. However, chances are those are not four linked and those are not in the colors you can use. And uh, Again, space is rather limited. Also good to regal potential belts if you have a very bad one. A belt like that is uh, really solid. So, about the jewel crafting. Preferred way is using uh, alteration orbs. So, you can imagine the price increase of those. It's um, like with many things with Power of Exile, it's good to really invest some time in them, know the suffixes and prefixes, uh, prefixes by head, so know what you're aiming for before you start crafting and when you stop and when you regal. I'm looking for reduced mana cost mana on hit and otherwise life will do but i also look out for roles for other builds and uh, potentially sell jewelers trading on the better realm was rather abysmal it's very bad couldn't use xyz so had to spend a lot of time in trade chats and that's horrible when you rather play the game So rules on the Viridian jewels, jewelers are mana on hit and uh, reduced mana cost. That's why we're rolling these. Besides that, they can roll cold damage, AOE damage, mace damage, two-handed damage, <coughs> and physical damage. So a lot of options there. The mana on hit mod is rather rare but good jewelers really can save up like four to five skill points if you really need it especially for this build the int and dex is also nice and since this build doesn't go to the sign life wheel and we do want to get 5k or more life then you have to get some really nice life jewels so crafting can be fun but time consuming it's well worth it to buy a blue one with the mods you really really need Uh, 
not, it's fine. You save up all those jewels and buy those even crappy blues. Still can sell. If people want them to roll. And because I like crafting, I never sell my augmentation orbs. I have a lot of them, more than I can use, but I never sell them. Because it's always horrible when you're out of them. Same goes for trench mutes, I never sell those. So Besides creating a lot of regal orbs and getting gear you need, um, it's important to have uh, some bookmarks in XIZ, set up uh, multiple windows with uh, searches for gear you need, and every time you hit th thumb, I'll tap to them, refresh your search, and hopefully you find the gear. Just using a Zenith gloves. Uh, Blood Dance and Cargus. You need a um, couple items with uh, over 100% resistances and uh, preferably a lot of ink as well. And those share mods, so they're all suffixes, increasing the pressure on your items. Still running the Chaos Golem, uh, the Flame Golem, ideally. It would be a Chaos Golem in a helm with plus two m to minion. So level 22 Chaos Golem can give 5% physical reduction. And if you have a lot of fr frenzy charges, it all, uh, uh, a lot of endurance charges, it all adds up. Let's say in an extreme example, if you have 10% reduced physical damage taken, and you take one frenzy charge and you go to 14. Some people might say I increase it with 4%, but you're not. Because your damage will go, taking will go from 90% to 86. That's another way of looking at it. However, if you have, in an extreme case, 95% physical damage reduced taken, and you increase it with one frenzy charge, you go up to 99%. So then your damage taken will go from 5% to 1%. And that's an increase of like 80% less damage taken. So the higher you get, the more specialized you become. The better to increase the new, um, the new uh, endurance charge or chaos column gives. That's why it's good to stack them up, go to the high percentages. So this is a nice ice crash um, jewel for X. Unfortunately, we are mace, so that's not good. With an X, we'd never be able to get a reduced stun threshold uh, high enough. So. But if that one will sell, and perhaps even trade for an uh, maze one. So, the final edge of gear. Quality on hypothermia. 30% more cold really does uh, its work. It's like doing 30% more damage when concerning if a target can be chilled or not. But this is a weapon of my choice, it's fast. It's not uh, viral or physical DPS, but it's speedy as you can see. That's the way I like to play, the speed, fast clear speed. If you compare it to the old, the slow-mo, let's swap it over, try it out. So, like I said, quality on hypothermia does wonders, as well as uh, a bit of fortified duration. Do not neglect those gems as well. Uh, 
And don't be fooled by a tooltip. Hypothermia doesn't show like many other things, nor does it show when you're buffed. With uh, frenzy charges, etc., during a fight you can see, but uh, in town you cannot. And now we're one thing more to check, and that's uh, Arctic Breath, link to cast one damage taken. We're creating a chilled round, and the chilled round will chill monsters. Uh, another nice effect of the Arctic Breath will be uh, applying the Temporal Change Curse. As you can see, it works with uh, increased duration, but it will take a whole four link. But the, uh, the blue socket from Masnet Loves can be utilized this way. That's a good thing. You're probably gonna end up with one blue there. GMP, more effects, and the explosions uh, get influenced by our increased area for effect. Although you're not going to get hit much, much because you're stunning. Or the emergency situations. This can be a nice addition. Not too fun of the molten shell because you cannot choose when it goes off. So it, if you level it up too high, you jump into a thorn flash or other reflect monster. And things can get rather dangerous. So I think I prefer the increased duration over. Um, Having a molten shell in there. But you have to have the room. And that means you have a, a flame golem, a loose one, no life leech with that one. And you have a loose vengeance, no life leech or really physical damage linked to vengeance anymore and uh, yeah that's the price you have to pay for the setup so our good breath is nice however comes at a price Things might also get a bit laggy, adding Arctic Breath. The same for Molten Shell, it will also make things rather laggy. It's pretty big, the explosion. But GMP and frustration is good enough. Alright, this uh, wraps it up. Um, thanks for watching.